Welcome to the demo on creating enterprise integrations using WSO2 Micro Integrator and Corio. In this demo, I will cover the basic features and capabilities of WSO2 Micro Integrator together with Corio, uh, focusing on how to develop integrations using the new WSO2 MI VS Code extension with AI assistance. I will also demonstrate how to deploy and manage these developed integrations in Corio. Uh, providing a robust and user-friendly solution for your enterprise needs. So here, uh, WSO2 Micro Integrator is used as the integration technology or as the integration runtime for this use case. And Corio is uh, used as the internal developer platform to uh, deploy and manage uh, the developed uh, integration. So I'll start by explaining the uh, the very simple uh, use case that I am going to implement. So I have a MySQL database uh, with this customer data and I want to expose this uh, data in database as a service or an API to external developers to consume. Uh, so it has basically four uh, columns and I want to expose this as a JSON payload uh, to the external uh, developers. So we'll start by going to the VS Code uh, to develop our uh, integration. So we have a uh, WSO2 uh, micro integrator extension. So you can go to the uh, extensions pane and search for WSO2 micro integrator and you will get something like this. So you first have to install it and then we'll see how we can use it. So I have already installed the extension. I'm going to use it. Uh, so you, you get a, an icon like this where you can click on that one and then you get a page like this. So since we are starting this project from scratch, I'm going to click on create new project. Here we'll give a, a name like customer uh, API and select the location as this and then click on create. So this uh, create the the folder structure and then uh, gives us this page uh, where we can uh, describe our uh, requirement in plain English and then uh, the AI will try to create the resources for us and then we just have to uh, add whatever required or for that also we can get the assistance of the AI. So we'll uh, describe uh, our use case uh, very simply. So what I want is to uh, uh, create uh, a customer API uh, customer API uh, that will provide that will provide a JSON payload uh, with the following resource path the resource path should be something like this customer uh, account ID account ID and uh, then uh, uh, keep the uh, the base part as this because we might want to extend this and then the the data uh, will come from a uh, my yes QL uh, database in a table uh, called uh, so the table name is uh, customer uh, the table has following fields the fields are uh, account ID first name last name KYC status so the fields are account ID, first name, last name, and KYC status. Okay, that is the requirement that we have. Let's see what uh, the AI uh, generates. 
so yeah so it understood that we need to have an api and now it's working on creating that api yeah so it's using the correct uh, okay uh, the query and uh, yes this is what i want so what i can do from here is i can uh, click on the add to project which should uh, add this resource in the correct places and then i can see that it's added under apis as this one okay so so when i click on that one i get a graphical view so so behind this one there is a source view source view also which we can get by clicking on the show source button yeah so uh, this is the the implementation that we saw in the ai and now we can uh, do uh, the changes that is required so uh, you can uh, either edit the source view if you know the syntax and all or you can use the low code editor to develop uh, it doesn't matter which one you use so in this demo i'll use both approaches so i'll first uh, uh, go to this one so here we'll make these parameters uh, so right now they are hard coded we'll uh, change this to read them from the uh, environment variable so the standard syntax is system db url and uh, system db user system db password okay so that should do it and then we'll just make sure the query is generated correctly uh, do this change to make it read the parameter from this one and yeah then that's all i need to change and yeah everything looks like so that is how you edit in the uh, source view so if you go to the low code editor view so here you can see under each of the mediators you can find this plus sign so this is what we need to click if you want to add an element let's say now i need to uh, print a log every time this is getting this is getting invoked i can simply do this by click on this plus one and adding a log mediator so uh, if you look uh, closer on this pane here you can see there are a lot of built-in uh, mediators that you can use to implement your integration logic you can uh, use uh, uh, flow controlling mediators like filter clone for each aggregate and then there are data transformation uh, mediators and then the generic ones like these ones and, and and a lot more and then if this is not enough you can even look for uh, connectors for example if you have to integrate with a, a salesforce uh, to query some data or to push something you can use uh, the salesforce connector which is there with the micro integrator i hope uh, you get the idea so we'll go back to our uh, task and uh, i'll use the log mediator here and then here i'm going to keep everything as it is and put a message so let's put a message saying uh, the customer api invoked we'll save so if you look uh, before i uh, submit when i submit uh, this will get updated both in the graphical and the source view so yeah so the source view uh, updated with this and the uh, the graphical view got updated with this log mediator so you can click and if you want to edit it you can again edit it and uh, do something and add something like this okay okay now uh, as the final step so now since we are calling a database so we need to add a, a driver uh, here to the root directory so i'll quickly do that as well so i'll i have already downloaded the uh, database driver i'm going to copy it and paste create a directory called uh, lips here and edit here okay if we go back to the editor i can see that uh, yeah, there is a, a new lips folder with the driver so we'll uh, initialize the repository and commit all this so that we can connect this to the core connect this to Corio. So at the my project 
resources commit and we'll push it to github as a public repository so it is pushing uh, to the github and let's see yeah so it has created all the resources that are required so we'll go to choreo and then and, and do the required uh, configurations so before uh, uh, creating the resource i'll give a quick uh, uh, overview on how the resources work in Corio. So in Corio, you can organize uh, your components like this. So a component is the basic, the smallest unit that you can control. And then uh, the component correspond to a, a running item like a service, a task, uh, similar things. So there are eight component types that we support. I'll show you when we are creating a component. And then there are projects which are used to uh, organize components related to an area so uh, you can use a, a methodology like domain driven development to uh, come up with the projects for your organization and the organization is the top level item so i'll go here and create a project called customer management and click create so this will create our project and then these are the eight uh, component types. So, I, so for this demo, I need a service component type. So I'm going to click on service and give it a name. So let's say customer API and uh, we'll copy the uh, URL of the repository here and click on WSO2 uh, MI and the project directory is correct and click on create. So this will create uh, the required uh, resources uh, that we need at an uh, infrastructure level uh, uh, which is required to uh, deploy and manage this in the uh, the Kubernetes cluster. So we'll give a few seconds for it to complete. Yeah, now we got the project here. So I will go to the build step because that's the ne next step after connecting and then click on build later so this will fetch the latest changes from the repository and try to build a, a docker image that we can use to deploy uh, so here uh, the, all the uh, the resources the my project resources that we created are there in the repository so this will use that uh, resources package packaged package it into a, a wso2 micro integrator runtime and create a docker image so this take a couple of minutes so until that happens uh, we'll go and get our database uh, details so for this example i am using the database also in uh, choreo so in choreo you can uh, have your own managed database uh, so you just need to go to the organization view and click on database so here you can see uh, the Corio managed database. If you want to create a new one, you can come to this view and create. So I'm going to use the one that I have already created and uh, these are the details to connect to that database. So we'll go to the uh, build page and uh, wait until that completes. Yeah, now the build has completed. So we'll go to the deploy page for the next step. So in the deploy page, so we need to configure those uh, uh, environment variables that we used in the development. So let me show you quickly that one. So these parameters need to be fed in. The URL should be in the format like this. So I'll copy it so we can construct that one. So I'll click on configure and deploy. And then here is where we can add all those uh, URL, uh, the database configurations. So it should be something like this. So we'll get the host name from here. You get the port from here. The database from here. That should do it. And then we add the remaining ones. The DB user, uh, which is uh, this value. And then uh, the DB password, which I can get from here. Uh, 
okay next and here it should uh, show us the generated endpoint details which we don't know don't need to do anything and then click on deploy so this should uh, deploy uh, the image that we built in the build stage the build step in the uh, development environment so the container is running uh, but the endpoint uh, updates are yeah it's it's done now so just to show you how uh, it's uh, working in the uh, infrastructure level i'll just show you uh, the devops uh, states so this is where you can see uh, the, the status on containers and everything so as we can see uh, the containers are not running because we are using the scale to zero feature uh, scale to zero feature is uh, the containers are terminated when there are no request when there are no demand for the service and it is spin up uh, when the uh, when a request is coming so i'll show you that as well just to get to you an idea how you can uh, work with those uh, data so here is where that configuration is so i'll turn it off uh, just to show you how it works so here now you can see that it's starting uh, three containers and uh, then uh, after these ones become available we can go and uh, test our service so we'll give it a few seconds for the services to start okay so one is running that means we can go and test that one out so just to make sure everything is working we'll go to the deploy page uh, it says it's still in progress so we'll give it a uh, few more seconds for the deployment to complete this step uh, you actually you don't have to do it i just showed you uh, how it works in the infrastructure level so we'll yeah it's active now we'll go and test this out so this is where you can go and test it out you can go to the test console view and you can find the resource that we developed uh, click on try it and give it a, a count id and then click on execute so this let's see if we have done everything correctly we should get a, a response like this so we'll we'll do a different id and execute yeah so that means uh, so everything is working as expected we just have to go and uh, deploy this in the production so i'll click on promote and uh, We'll keep uh, the same values uh, and uh, deploy. So if you want, we we can change. If we are real, we are working with the real production endpoint. We just need to use a different database connection settings and do the promotion. Okay, it's promoted, and we'll give few seconds for it to uh, be available in the production. So you can find all these uh, different URLs. If you go to the overview page, you can get uh, uh, the uh, the development URL from here and the production URLs from here, which you can uh, use to invoke this. So uh, I'll uh, show you, uh, so until the production is happening, I'll show you how the observability is, uh, the basic observability features that we have in Corio. So if you go to the metrics view uh, and click on uh, the, uh, the development where we did uh, several invocations. So here you can see uh, uh, the throughput details and the latency information uh, automatically configured and shown to you. And here under, under here you can see the uh, log, logs uh, generated from the, uh, uh, the MI runtime. So let's see if we can uh, find the uh, the log that we added yeah here we can see the the message that we added are printed in this one and you have this diagnostic view where everything is uh, correlated and shown to you in a single view so you can see uh, when the spikes are happening and, and relate the logs related to that one and in, in addition to that one you have this separate view where you can uh, go and filter logs uh, related to the your deployment so here you can use a uh, filter according to uh, the application logs and then uh, depending on the environment uh, the time ranges you can use these different sites and then uh, we can also search here here this is 
yeah this is the log that we added so so yeah so uh, this is how you would uh, uh, develop an integration using uh, micro integrator and use Corio to uh, deploy it in an environment and then uh, test it out and then uh, do all those management stuff like you can uh, there are a lot of things that I didn't mention in this demo you can use this to configure how security policies work uh, manage the scalability manage resources and all those sort of things that you would require in a typical uh, enterprise integration uh, requirement so thank you for uh, watching the demo